Hey guys, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to go from looking like this to looking like this and the solution to your skinny fat problem. Hope you guys are having a great day. Well, today I wanna to break down the idea of what is skinny fat? What is a dad bod? What is this physique that we create that we wanna get out of? I'm gonna give you some actual do's and don'ts. I'm gonna give you some evidence on why we get there. I'm gonna talk about metabolic flexibility, what happens to our bodies over time and how it can change in a negative manner and I'm gonna give you the solution on how to resolve it. So if you like information from a coach who has competed in bodybuilding naturally, who continues to provide information and has for more than a decade helped people reach their goals, hit subscribe, it's what I love to do here. And today's question comes from here on my Instagram direct message. So thank you guys for the great questions. I will not read the question, then we're gonna get into how we solve this problem. I'm skinny fat or had a dad bod, whatever they call it. I have belly fat that I've been trying to get rid of. Since November, I've been strength training, walking 10,000 steps a day and watching my macros. I see I've physically put on some muscle, but my body fat percent has remained virtually the same at 21%. I can see provide pictures, but I want to see how do I get rid of the gut. So first things first, this gentleman has already taken a lot of the steps, but I'm going to give you the reason why the result hasn't gotten to where you want it to get. But first, let's talk about what is skinny fat. We kind of have to define it. So I wanted to define what skinny fat here means. Skinny fat means that in clothes or in person, someone looks like they have a normal BMI, a healthy body weight. Top to bottom, their weight does not look out of place. You would not look at this person and say, wow, they are out of shape. However, they have put themselves in a position where they have below average body mass as far as muscle and strength, and they have above average body fat, okay? So what this does is it positions us in a place where most likely we've gone through lots of phases of fat loss, and in those phases of fat loss, we've used methods of dieting that were less than ideal, likely losing lean body mass and leaving us in a metabolically compromised position, meaning when you lose body fat and you do it through low calorie dieting or very aggressive low calorie dieting, what tends to happen is people put the weight back on quickly. Problem is they put body fat back on quickly, thus meaning they have a suppressed metabolic rate and an increased rate of body fat storage. So a lot of the issues that are related to being skinny fat that I've seen are just through repeated bouts of terrible approaches to getting weight off and being weight focused. And while weight does matter, ultimately it should not be the ultimate test of success, right? Sometimes the scale is going to go up when we add lean body mass and muscle. And this is the magic marker. This is what we should all be after, having the most amount of muscle that we can on our frames. Now I do it as a natural bodybuilder and you can do it as a natural bodybuilder too. So first things first, I wanna talk about what we need to do in order to improve our body composition, meaning less body fat, more muscle. You gotta let go of the number on the scale, okay? Some of us get attached, both men and women, to a number on a scale that means success. You gotta let go of that number and start to look at things like waist measurements, body composition as far as body fat percentage, and our strength and performance in exercise, in a sport, or perhaps, like me, if you go into the gym, you can look at successes. Hey, I was able to lift more weight this week or this month than I was last month. Those are improvements. If you play a sport, you're able to run faster, jump higher, last longer. These are measurements that are more important than just the scale. Now to do this, we have to just understand basic nutrition needs. Our body requires nutritional need to reach these goals. And I've talked about this many times and I have many free eBooks on my website at prophysique.com, but let's just go over the basics right here so you understand. First and foremost, protein. You've all heard it. What is protein? It's the building block for muscle. So if we're trying to put on more muscle, we need to be taking in enough protein. So if you are in a place where you're skinny fat, that tells me that your body weight's probably pretty low, right? You have a little more body fat than you want to, but you could probably set your protein at about a gram per pound of your current body weight that's gonna be plenty of protein, right? Now the struggle there is making sure we don't overdo the carbs and the fats. Now if you're way overweight and you're watching this video and you're just trying to get down to a healthy body weight, 
you can set your protein to your goal weight. That's just a great way to do it. That's gonna provide you all the benefits that you can get from protein in regards to body composition, as well as satiety. Protein is very filling. Now, when it comes to fat, a lot of times we hear fats and carbs demonized. They both have a ton of value. You should be including them in your diet daily, okay? Fats are gonna provide the downstream effect of benefiting our hormones, which we're gonna get into in just a second, because hormonal issues can be something that is caused by our approach to fat loss, and I'm gonna explain how we can reverse that. Also, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates get demonized because many people associate carbohydrates with fat storage, because we know when we eat carbohydrates, we release insulin. But did you know that insulin is actually anabolic? Yes, so let's talk about what that means. And lastly, before we get into some of these mechanisms, I wanted to talk about what happens at the end of our lives if we have too much body fat and too little muscle. It's actually been associated with cognitive decreases in performance. That's right. So it's potentially possible that by keeping more body fat and having less muscle, we are going to shorten our quality of life. So what is the most important thing for someone that's trying to no longer be skinny fat for them to do? And my answer to that is exercise. Nothing is going to change your body as profoundly as using it, okay? Now, I have been a natural bodybuilder for over 25 years now. It's something that I've been obsessed with since I was young, and it's given me a lot of value in my life. But I'm not here to tell you that everybody needs to be focused on a sport like bodybuilding. There are great ways that we can exercise that don't involve lifting weights, if that's not your thing. But using our bodies head to toe is something that is very valuable, especially when it comes to losing that skinny fat or dad bod look. If you have a sport that you love, go all in on it, okay? If you like to do something like basketball, like volleyball, like golf, find a way to inspire yourself to put on a little muscle. Now, I think all of us know that resistance training is the best way to put on muscle. So I'm gonna encourage everybody to do that by providing a free training guide, okay? It's got workouts, it's got nutrition, it's got cardio. It even talks about how to select a gym. But the purpose of this is because I just want to get you guys going with something. We're in the middle of our 90 day transformation challenge, but we will be doing another one in the future. The idea of changing our bodies and our lives starts with using our body, improving our muscle, adding lean body mass. That is going to have a profound impact on everything we do. One of the hot topics of the day right now is hormone therapy. It's become very common, and I think a lot of people are using TRT or testosterone replacement therapy as a means to go to the doctor and get an injection and think that that's gonna solve other problems. But if you don't change your lifestyle first, it's not going to benefit you. I am 46 years old, I am completely lifetime natural, and I have no intentions of getting onto TRT until I need that therapy but I don't think that's coming anytime soon and let me explain why. Exercise, strength training, actually re releases anabolic hormones, that's right. So before you go and just jump into doing some TRT or some hormone therapy, it would be better if you actually put your lifestyle in a position to see how you respond. You may not need it. By adding muscle, by losing body fat, by focusing on some factors that I'm gonna explain here in a minute, you will actually improve your hormone profile naturally without having to just get on something that you have to inject every week, every month, whatever it may be. While that may be a good kickstart, you are still going to have to change your lifestyle. So I would suggest that everybody that can make the lifestyle change first before going down that avenue. So what are these anabolic hormones that everybody talks about? Anabolism means that we are adding tissue to our body. And the three most important anabolic hormones that are improved from exercise, well, you guessed it. We're talking about growth hormone, we're talking about insulin, and we're talking about testosterone. Now, I know insulin gets a bad rap, but it's actually anabolic. So when we're eating carbohydrates and we're actually producing some insulin, it can benefit us. That's right, because insulin is going to store our energy in our muscle cells. That's right. Now, obviously, if we're over-consuming calories far beyond our needs, then you can store body fat, but you don't need insulin to do that. In fact, if you over-consume fat, you will store fat directly from your food. It doesn't even need to be converted like it does with carbohydrates. So what really matters here is our caloric profile and our daily routine. 
So let's talk quickly about the things that you should not do when you're trying to improve your body composition. Number one, crash diet. This is how we got in the problem in the first place, right? Crash dieting where we do these 800 calorie, 1000 calorie, 1200 calorie diets for months on end and we get our body fat to come down, we get our body weight to come down, but we end up losing what I would consider the most important part of this process, which is lean body mass, okay, muscle. Sarcopenia is a real thing. Having low muscle mass as we age really causes the decline of the human condition much faster. So we don't want to lose muscle. So do not crash diet. We also suppress our metabolic rate. Our metabolisms are adaptive. They're very dynamic. So when you do a low calorie diet, your body adapts to that and that becomes your new norm. And nobody can stick to these 800 calorie diets forever. You reach your goal weight, you go on vacation, you put on 20, 30 pounds, you come back. Now what do you do? Because you put on body fat so quickly, you haven't allowed time for your metabolic rate to increase and you try to go on another diet and you can see how these cycles can compound. Also, don't overdo alcohol consumption. While I am a big fan of having a drink every now and then, drinking all the time can have some downstream problems, okay? It's going to suppress some of our anabolic hormones like testosterone. It's also going to impair some of our decision making. It's going to dehydrate us. It's also gonna impair protein metabolism. And heck, it's just going to put us in a position where we don't feel great. And along with the low calorie dieting and the over drinking of alcohol, do not go on a low protein diet. I know it's very trendy now to do a one meal a day approach, but you need to make sure that you're getting adequate protein to keep and build muscle throughout the process. I'm telling you guys, if you lose weight and it's muscle that you're losing, you're going to end up in a terrible situation. So what are the keys? What do we need to do if we want to reach this goal? First things first, let's keep stress low. Look at your life. Be accountable for what your daily routine is like. How stressful is your life? Are you getting adequate sleep? Okay. Are you able to get everything done you need to get done in a day? As odd as it sounds, the busier you are, if you are getting things done, does not mean you're more stressed, okay? If you are fitting in time to prepare your meals, if you are fitting in time to make exercise a priority, you're going to feel better, perform better, and be a better version of yourself. So keep your stress low. Focus on getting seven hours of sleep a night. Have a predictable bedtime and waking time. Create a routine where you're creating these positive patterns that are easy to repeat and not difficult on you. If you need to, I have a treadmill at my house. I also sometimes will order meals from a company like Icon Meals if I don't have time to meal prep. Have backups for your systems so you can remain consistent. I've already talked a little bit down here, like I said, about diet and exercise and explain that, but more than anything, I wanna talk about the idea of movement. You know, I've done some pretty good videos on the topic of walking. I use walking to maintain my low body fat, okay? Obviously, I do resistance training and I do nutrition, but cardiovascular exercise for me is essentially just walking. Why? It's easy. You can do it at any time. And most of us, myself included, at one time or another, have had very sedentary jobs. The worst body composition I ever had was when I got a very sedentary office job. I ended up working sometimes 70, 80 hours a week, lots of overtime, missing gym sessions, eating junk food, right, as my primary diet, not getting good sleep. And I got to a place where my body composition was not very good. But guess what happens when you start to correct those patterns, you start to plan ahead, you start to move more, it improves. Now, you mentioned to me that you've already made a lot of these improvements and you're seeing the change and yet you still have belly fat. Understanding that body fat comes off in a pattern which we don't get to predetermine, but for most men, it's going to be the abdomen that is one of the last places where all the fat comes off, okay? So sometimes you won't even notice it, but it's coming off of other areas, your lower back, your glutes, your hamstrings, sometimes your face, sometimes your shoulders, sometimes your upper back. Body fat is stored all over our bodies, okay? As you continue to train, eat well, and move more, you're going to continue to improve your body composition. You didn't get skinny fat in a week, a month, or a year. It takes years of mistreating yourself to get to this position. It's not gonna be undone that quickly. Unless you have a previous history where you were a athlete or a competitive bodybuilder, in which case muscle memory will help you build muscle and lose fat at the same time. But if you're new to resistance training, you're gonna be able to put on muscle rather quickly, but the body fat is still going to come off slowly. 
Do not get in a rush. Look for small improvements month over month. Look for measurements to be coming in on your pants. Look for people to say things to you like, I can notice that you're getting leaner. You'll see it in your face. Look for changes like strength. Are you getting better in the gym? It's not always about the scale, guys. And I think that's what most people that end up skinny fat are focused on, is a number on a scale. Don't just focus on that number. I wanna apologize, guys, for the echo in here. I'm about to move to my new gym just down the street and I tested the videos there. Sound quality is amazing. So I'll get over there pretty soon, guys. But let me know if you have any questions below. Hopefully this answered your question. If you guys have questions, be sure to go to my Instagram direct message and subscribe if you enjoy this content and I'll talk to you tomorrow.